In this video, we will talk about planar graphs and the four color map theorem. Okay, so what is a planar graph? A graph is planar if it is isomorphic, which conceptually means I can kind of like move it around, move the vertices around while keeping the edges the same. If I can do that, and I can get a graph that I can draw on a plane so that no two edges cross each other. Okay, so let's do an example. Are the following graphs planar? Part A says K4. Remember, that's the complete graph with four vertices. So if I draw four vertices, remember a complete graph meant that all of the pairs of vertices are connected with an edge. So this one's connected to the other three, this one's connected to the other three, and then these remaining pair is connected. So at first glance, it seems like, it seems like they cross here. It seems like, it seems like it's not planar. But remember, there's this key thing about like, you know, isomorphic here in the definition, which means, well, as long as I can draw, you know, the graph in some way, maybe if I move the vertices around or bend the edges in a certain way, if I can do that in some way and get the edges to never cross each other, that's good enough. That's planar. So what I'm going to do is notice that this edge, ooh, notice that this diagonal edge, well, it's crossing this other diagonal edge. What if instead of drawing that through the center, what if I bent it and had it curve around like this? So that would make the graph look like, let's keep all the other edges the same. So all the outside ones are the same, this diagonal one's the same. But instead of drawing the other diagonal as we did, what if we bend it around the outside and do that? Now, none of the edges cross each other. Okay, so as a result, Yes, this is planar. Yes, this is planar, because it was possible to move the vertices around and bend the edges so that none of the edges cross each other. If multiple edges meet at a vertex, that's not considered crossing. It's only considered crossing if it happens to be somewhere else, kind of like in the middle of the graph, not at one of the vertices. Okay, so this is planar. So what about K5, a complete graph with five vertices? So is it possible to draw this? in some way so that none of the edges cross each other. Okay, well, let's let's try it. Uh, let's try maybe first I'll draw, you know, all of these edges connecting kind of around the outside and now let's try to make this vertex connect with all the other ones. So I got to draw this connection, this connection. Okay, now let's try to make this vertex connect with the others. So, well, it's already connected to this one and this one. But to connect it to this one, I can't go through the middle because I'd end up crossing. So maybe I go around the outside. I also got to make it connect to this vertex. So I could either go down and around like this, or I could go up and around like that. It'll turn out both of those end up being like kind of equivalent. Um, so let's just draw one of them. What if I had it go down like this? Okay, now let's focus on this next vertex. And I'm going to show that no matter how hard I try to connect it with this other circled vertex will lead to a crossing. Because if I try to draw something going through the middle, well, it's going to end up crossing here. And if I try going around the outside, well, no matter how hard I try, now eventually I'll have to pass through this blue one, and that'll lead to a crossing. And that's a problem. And even if I go around this way, well, no matter how hard I try, I've got to go through the blue one to get to that circled one. And that's a crossing. Well, would that same thing have happened if instead of making this blue one go down like that, if we made the blue one go up and around? Well, yeah, because if I try to get from this circled one to this circled one, you know, if I go up like this, I'll have to cross that blue edge somewhere, and that's a problem. I can't escape that. So in this graph, there is just no way, no way to connect these circled vertices without crossing, unfortunately, without crossing. Okay, of course, you know, we've just kind of explored, you know, one orientation and, a, you know, a couple of variations kind of within that. This isn't a rigorous argument. We, we would need to show, we would need to show that all other, I'll put this in quotes, orientations, all other orientations also lead 
to a crossing, to the edges crossing somewhere. Okay, it turns out that that will happen. Um, you know, even in considering this one example, we did consider multiple different possibilities and all of them resulted in that same type of thing. So hopefully that, you know, hopefully that gives us some convincing, you know, <laughs> reasoning for why we'd expect this to not be planar. It turns out it's not planar. But, you know, actually showing this a bit, a bit more thoroughly is, is hard. It is hard to prove. Okay, so for our purposes, I want us to just be able to, you know, test it out by drawing, you know, several different variations like this and really trying to convince ourselves either that like, oh yeah, it's doable like it was here or like something like this and being able to convince ourselves that it's not planar. Okay, so I want to end this video with two key theorems. The first one says that all trees are planar. Remember, a tree is a graph that looks like, and I'll draw an example. Here is an example of a tree. A tree is something that is connected. Um, it's a simple graph, no multiple edges, no loops, and there's no cycles in the graph. We've seen a bunch of trees already in previous videos, but any tree, it's possible to draw it without having any of the edges cross each other, just like I did here. So they are all planar. Proving that uh, requires induction. That's one of the ways to prove it, which we talked about in section 5.1. Okay, and now what I want to end the video by talking about is something called the four color map theorem, which was proved just in 1976. So relatively recent in terms of like, you know, the very long history of math. So what does this say? Any map that is separated into contiguous regions can be colored using at most four colors so that no two adjacent regions are the same color. So adjacent here means that they share a border. That's more than just one isolated point. So for example, you know, this is the state of New Mexico. That's the state of Texas next to it. If I color this one blue, then Texas shares a border with New Mexico. So it's got to be a different color. So like maybe green. Okay. What this statement is saying is, well, it's possible to do that using, at, using just four colors. That guarantees that bordering states will be different colors. Okay, okay. The other thing that this definition of border means is that if two states are you know, sharing a border that's just at one isolated point, that is not uh, considered adjacent in this definition. So like for example, Arizona here and Colorado, they are only bordering each other at one point. So it is okay for them to be the same color. Okay, so, you know, one of the ways I could, you know, think about this is to assign a vertex to, you know, each of these regions, each of these states. So here's California here. I'm going to put a vertex. I'm going to call that CA. There's Nevada next to it. I'll call that NV. Up above, I have Oregon, which I'll call OR. Okay, if you're less familiar with U.S. geography, that's okay. Don't worry about the names of the states so much. That's not really the key idea. Next to this is Idaho, which is I-D. Um, next to that, next to that, I have Wyoming, which is W-Y. And then kind of diagonally to the left, we got Utah, U-T. To the right is Colorado, which I'll call C-O. Uh, below Colorado, we have New Mexico, which is N-M. And then to the left of that is Arizona, which I'll call A-Z. So I'm just focusing on a few states here. And now let's just draw these vertices to the left. So let's see, I have, let me just copy this over. I'm gonna copy this over. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. And what I'm gonna do now is any pair of states that is, shares a border, I'm gonna connect them with an edge. So if they share a border, if they share a border, then draw an edge then draw an edge between them. So for example, California and Oregon, they share this border, so I should draw an edge connecting them. Same with Oregon and Idaho, Idaho and Wyoming. Let's do this systematically, sorry. Let's go back to California. California shares a border also with Nevada and also with Arizona. Nevada also shares a border with Idaho, um, with Utah, and with Arizona. Arizona 
also shares a border with Utah up above and with New Mexico. Remember, we talked about the issue of Arizona and Colorado. They only share a border at one corner, so they would I would not draw an edge connecting Arizona and Colorado. Those are not considered adjacent. Uh, New Mexico shares a border with Colorado, Colorado with Utah. Similarly, New Mexico and Utah, they are only bordering at one isolated point, so I do not draw an edge connecting them. Um, Colorado borders Wyoming. Utah also borders Idaho and Wyoming. Okay, so in this sense, I get this graph. And this problem now of coloring this thing is just, it boils down to a graph coloring problem, which we've talked about before. You know, for example, if I started to color this, you know, maybe I would make Arizona be this like pink color. And because Utah is bordering it, it's got to be a different color, like blue. And then, for example, Nevada's bordering both the blue state and this pink state, so it has to be a different color. So look, maybe I make it black. Okay, so this is just a partial coloring. I'd encourage you to play around with this and see if you can now color these remaining vertices, but it's going to be possible to do this in a way that does not use more than four colors. Okay, so it turns out that any map like this can be represented as a planar graph. As long as it's, uh, as long as the regions are nice enough, and the word I'm using to describe nice enough is this word contiguous. And that just kind of means like no weird thing happens. Like, you know, I know California is the state over here, but nothing weird happens like uh, there's some part of New Mexico that is actually California land. That would be weird. So the word contiguous rules out weird things like that happening. So any map that's like this can be represented as a planar graph where these edges, you know, it's possible to draw the graph in a way that the edges don't cross each other. So what the theorem says is that any planar graph is four colorable. I can color it with four colors. One of the really interesting things about this theorem is that this was actually the first major theorem that was actually proved by a computer because it really boils down to doing a ton, a ton of casework. And the computers are great at that. Even to this date, you know, the, you know, the most recent proof that we have of it is still done with the, pro with the computer. Um, yeah, there we have it, the four color map theorem.